In this video, we're going to look at how we can use Excel to compare proportions when we're doing hypothesis testing. Excel has lots of good built-in ability to deal with comparing means for different samples, but it's not very good at, at comparing proportions. So if you'd like to follow along with this, uh, all you really have to do is reproduce within Excel the table that I have here. So let me describe the situation. All right, so we are looking at two different ads that are shown at random to different views or to different users online. So one set of people gets to see ad A, the other sees ad B. And what we want to figure out is, it does it make sense for us to continue this strategy where we have different people seeing different ads, right? Or is there one ad that is actually more successful, more impactful, actually gets interaction, specifically clicks for, from users uh, more successfully than the other one does? If so, then it would make sense for us to switch and only use the more successful ad. Right, so we can easily track both the number of views we have per ad and the number of clicks. We just want to know, does it actually matter right, which ad we use? And if so, then we'd want to focus our efforts on the more successful ad. So here we have the data. Uh, if you uh, don't have this in Excel, just go ahead and type this in. It's pretty easy to reproduce it. So we have ad A. Uh, we have uh, ad A gets 5,217 clicks out of 41,654 views. Ad B gets 4,538 clicks out of 36,854 views. So we need to figure out, uh, is one of these ads significantly more successful than the other? So first thing we want to do is set up our hypothesis test. So we already have some idea of the actions we're going to take. Uh, that is uh, kind of the, the status quo is that we're running two ads kind of at random to different groups. Uh, and that would be what we would probably want to continue if there actually isn't any difference between them. All right, so our default action in this case is just going to be we'll continue right, running these two ads. We already have them, so it's, there's no additional expense involved or anything like that. All right, so that's what's going to happen if the two proportions are equal. So, uh, so our null hypothesis then is that the proportion number one, which will say the proportion of people that click through uh, for ad A is equal to proportion number two. That is the proportion of people that click through if they see ad B. Okay. Then our alternative hypothesis is going to be that the two proportions are not equal to one another. Now in this case, you can see we are doing a two-tailed test. That is, we don't actually have uh, any intuition for which of these ads is going to be more successful or not. Right? We, we don't really have that in mind, right? nor do our actions specify a specific direction that our hypothesis test should be in. But there certainly may be cases where when you're using, uh, when you're, you're comparing proportions, you will actually want to use a one-tailed test, either left-tailed or right-tailed. So use that whenever it's appropriate. It turns out a lot of the math really doesn't change much. I'll just make a note of where it does change if you are using a one-tailed test instead of the two-tailed test we have here. All right, so first we're going to have Excel calculate the raw proportions for us. So you can see here where I recreated that table that we had on the other slide. So we have add A, add B, we have the numbers of clicks and the number of views. Uh, there we have the click-through rate is going to be our proportion in this case. Because remember, a proportion is just the number of successes divided by the number of observations. In this case, a success is a click, an observation is a view. So we have a certain number of people that have viewed it. Those that click through we consider to be a success. So in this case, we would have then a click through rate for ad A of 0.125, a little bit more than that. So roughly 12.5%. Meanwhile, for ad B, it's 0.123, a little bit more than that. So it's a little above 12.3%, right? So just eyeballing it, these feel really close. So I don't feel like there's going to be a huge difference, but at the same time, when you have this large a sample, we have four, over 41,000 seeing ad A and over 36,000 seeing ad B, it might be this difference is enough to be statistically significant so that ad A is actually more successful uh, in a way that we can stay with some level of certainty. So because of that, we should actually follow through the hypothesis test to see is this actually a significant difference. So the next step then is to compute our pooled proportion estimate. So what this does, it takes our two, our two different samples. So in this case, we have for ad A and ad B. We just figure, well, if they're basically the same, 
then we can just throw them all together. So we throw together all of the successes, throw together all of the observations, and calculate the proportion for that. So it's really just looking at what is the overall proportion of success that we're seeing, assuming that there really is no difference uh, between these two ads. So in our example here, uh, the proportion would be we add together all of the successes, that's uh, 5217 plus 5438, that would be in our numerator, and then we divide that by our denominator being all of the views added together, so the 41,654 for ad A and the 36,854 for ad B. And it comes out to be 0.1243%, I'm sorry, 0.1243, that's 12.43% or so uh, once you round a little bit. Yeah. And this should, this should naturally be between the two proportions that we saw before. And here's how you do work that in Excel. So our formula then, make sure you remember all the parentheses. So for our pooled proportion, you would take, in this case, the clicks for add A is in cell B2, add to that cell B3, uh, then we'd close the parentheses, then we divide that by, again, we need to have this sum in parentheses, that is C2 plus C3. So that's the formula you'll need to use. And certainly feel free as we work through the video, you know, pause the video, update Excel to the formulas that you see here, and then continue. The next step, right, so one thing that we're going to need is, and this is really a big key, anytime you do hypothesis testing for comparison, fundamentally what we're doing is we're looking at those two different proportions and what's the difference between them. So proportion one minus proportion two, what is that? And is that a significant amount? Now in order to get this, uh, decide the significance, we need to divide it by the standard error. So what is the standard error? Now we know normally when we're doing proportions, if we're doing a proportion against a value, the standard error would be the proportion times one minus the proportion, and then we divide that by the sample size, and then take the square root of the whole thing, and that gives us the standard error. So here we're doing something similar, but we're using the pooled proportion to do the calculation. So the standard error when we're looking at a difference in proportion, that's what SEDP stands for, is the square root of that pooled proportion times one minus the pooled proportion, and then we multiply that by one over N1 plus one over N2. So this is really capturing the fact that we have these two different samples that may be different sizes. This is providing the appropriate weighting. Uh, so in this case, uh, if you did it by hand, you would calculate the 0.1243 times 1 minus 0 .2, 0 0.1243, and you multiply that by 1 over the first sample that is uh, for ad A, there were 41,654 views, plus 1 over 36,854 views. So this comes to 0 0.0024. Okay, and that's what we're going to have to be dividing the difference by to find our Z test value. So here's how you would work all of that in Excel. So I just added another couple lines to the Excel spreadsheet that we saw before. So you can use this square root function, and then you can see B5 is where that pooled proportion was. So you have B5 times 1 minus B5, and then it's pulling C2 and C3 uh, appropriately for our sample sizes. Now the fourth step then is to calculate our Z statistic or our, our test Z value and then make the comparison and make a conclusion. Right, so our Z then is going to be looking at what is the difference in our two proportions. So take the first proportion, subtract off the second one. Now naturally here you are going to need to pay attention to the one and the two if you're using a one-tailed test. You don't have to pay as much attention if you're using a two-tailed test. Really like either order matter doesn't matter for us because we don't really care which one is higher than the other, we're looking for a difference. If however, your, um, if, however, your hypothesis was depending on one being higher than the other, then you would want to make sure that you do the, the correct subtractions. Okay. Now use, and then we use the standard normal in this case, that is the, what I like to call the Z distribution. Right. And we'd use that for our critical values to then make the comparison and draw a conclusion. Now, we use the standard normal whenever we're dealing with proportions, as long as we have at least five successes and at least five failures in each sample. In this case, our samples are so huge. We have literally thousands of successes and thousands of failures uh, in each of our samples, so we can certainly use standard normal in this case. There are no concerns about that whatsoever. Right, so here we go. So you do the calculations as that 0.1253, subtract off the 
So we take the add A proportion, subtract off the add B proportion, and then divide by that standard error for a difference in proportions, that 0 0.0024, and you'll end up with 0.895. So the conclusion we can draw from this is that we're not going to reject the null hypothesis at any reasonable level of significance. Now here you may notice I, I skipped the step. Technically we should have very early on chosen a level of significance, right? so something like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 or 0 0.1. Uh, I skipped that step here. Uh, and it turns out skipping the step isn't really going to matter because after all, if we have, in this case, a two-tailed test, if we set our alpha equal to 0.1, which is the highest that we would normally set it at, uh, we'd have a critical value of 1.645, right? So we're still well within the do not reject range. So then we can say that statistically speaking, there is no significant difference in the proportion of click-throughs between these two ads. That being the case, right? We should just go ahead and, and keep letting both of them run at random. There's really very little to be gained, at least as far as we can tell, based on the statistics we have, uh, from focusing on one ad that we think is more successful than the other. Okay. Uh, but that's not all. There's also more we can do. Right. So here's the uh, last optional thing. And that is we could convert the z-test value into a p-value. And this is a really useful thing to do if, say, we're doing like I did, where I didn't choose a level of significance to start with. So this gives me a sense then of what level of significance it would take for me to reject the null hypothesis. So here recall the, the formulas that you're going to be using in Excel. It's all based on that norm.dist. So I have the three different versions here. Uh, we are going to be using a two-tailed test. So it's two times norm.dist. So that's pulling the weight of the normal distribution or the, the area under the curve technically. And we use negative ABS times the Z value. So what that does, that ensures that we're looking at the weight of the left tail, all right? Because this is, it, it, measure, it looks at the weight right, to the left of the point that we choose. Okay, and since we're doing two tail, we wanna make sure we, we pull that left tail and then we just double it. That's what the two times is for. Uh, then zero and one, that, indicate that indicates we're pulling from the standard normal. Uh, you can actually use this uh, with any uh, distribution you wish, any normal distribution, you can move it around, but 0, 1 is what we use for our purposes. And then finally, true to indicate that this is a cumulative distribution we're looking at, so we don't want the height of the curve, we want that area under the curve to the left of this point. Okay. Right, so since we're looking for any difference between these two proportions, we would use the two-tailed test version. Let's put all that into Excel then. So here I have filled in the, the last couple things, so the, the Z value and also the P value. So you can see our Z value is just looking at that difference in proportions, so that D2 minus D3, and then we divide that by B7, B7 being where our standard error for the difference in proportions is located. Uh, then for the P value, that's where we use that 2 times norm.dist, and then our arguments for that um, are negative ABS, B9, B9 was where I stored my Z value, and then 0, 1, true. So what this is telling me then, when I look at this uh, P value, is that I would have had to have had a level of significance of at least 0.371 to have rejected the null hypothesis. That's really, really high, well above, well, well above uh, the 0 0.1 that we might possibly work with or the 0 0.05 that is uh, far more commonly worked with. And so, so in this case, uh, certainly we are not going to be rejecting the null hypothesis, right? So we're going to keep running those ads, A and B. And that uh, wraps up this. So you can see, uh, like, it's not as easy as having a built-in formula would be, uh, but the number of calculations you have to do is pretty small, right? We, we just have one, two, three, four, five. It's a total of six uh, different uh, formulas you have to plug in. So uh, those are all available to you right here. And now one thing to remember, of course, is that if you're doing a one-tailed test, that last formula, the formula for the p-value is the one that would change. Everything else though would stay the same. So we don't actually have to worry about changing anything else based on the number of tails in the test, as long as we take into account, one, we choose our, if we're using a critical value, we choose that critical value correctly. So using a one-tailed versus two-tailed. And then the second would be in the calculation of the p-value that we calculate that correctly and take it into account. 
and that is that.